Prior to purchasing the Ender 3 some years ago, I had owned a few different 3D printers, but none of them came close to offering what the Ender 3 was able to, and they often had a much higher price tag. They had things like acrylic frames, which meant that calibrating and maintaining calibration was much more difficult, and a lot of them were full-blown kits, not the Ender 3 style where you plug in the top gantry to the bottom, plug in the cables, but we're talking a box of screws, nuts, bolts, cables, and it was a really involved process that often could take eight to 10 hours, and that was just to get it to a point where you could start then calibrating it. So it was no surprise to me at around $200 with an all aluminum frame and roughly a 30 minute setup time, the Corality had created something special. And this printer has done incredibly well over the years. I would argue it has to be the most sold 3D printer and has been sort of the gateway printer for a lot of people to get into 3D printing. And we've seen a couple different versions of it. Corality released the Ender 3 Pro, which had a few small changes over the Ender 3, as well as the Ender 3 V2, which took a lot of the community mods that had been created for the original Ender 3 and incorporated them into that printer. Well, late in 2021, Corality announced the Ender 3 S1, which although it certainly follows in the footsteps of the original Ender 3 and the Pro and the V2, has quite a few things that we haven't seen come stock on an Ender 3, like the CR Touch for automatic bed leveling, but more specifically, the Sprite, which is their new dual gear direct drive extruder hot end combo. Crowdy reached out to me a few months ago asking if I was interested in testing out and reviewing the Ender 3 S1 on the channel, and I accepted. So I've had the machine in since around January, and I've had some time to run various prints and tests on it. So today's video will be all about this Ender 3 S1. We'll go over the specs for the machine, we'll go over what the unboxing and setup was like, we will take a look at what the print quality has looked like coming off of this machine. And as always, I will give you my final thoughts, at least up until this point, and what my overall experience has been like using this printer. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Huge thank you to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printer models and is constantly expanding. I've been running their upgrades on a wide range of Creality printers for over a year now, and I've printed everything from standard PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they're a US-based company and that all their products are machined in-house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality that their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop-in replacements in most instances. This helps to expedite the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again very quickly. Links will be in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. Like we typically do, let's first run through the specs of the Ender 3 S1. The Ender 3 S1 has a build area of 220 by 220 by 270 millimeters, which is similar to the previous Ender 3 machines, but gives you 20 millimeters of extra height. As far as construction goes, it's near identical to the previous Ender 3 machines and is primarily made of aluminum extrusions. It comes standard with a magnetic flex plate system for the bed that is made up of a very thin spring steel and a knockoff build tack style sheet. The bed does include four large bed leveling knobs, which we have previously seen on most of the other Creality printers, but it also does have the CR Touch for automatic bed leveling. For those who don't know, the CR Touch is basically Creality's version of the BL Touch. It works very similarly, and the plus sign of it is that you can use it with any sort of build surface material. As mentioned, it features the new Sprite extruder from Creality, which is by far the biggest advancement I've seen from Creality in the extrusion department ever. The Sprite extruder is a fairly compact and lightweight extruder weighing roughly 210 grams, has dual gears, and a fairly short and constrained filament path. There's a compact stepper motor used with it, and it has two fans, one for hot and cooling, and one for the layer cooling. The Sprite comes standard with a PTFE lined or non all metal hot end, which is something I am a bit saddened about, but they did announce and release the Sprite Pro, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. The S1 has a filament runout sensor, X and Y axis belt tensioners, and dual Z axis lead screw that are connected with the belt to maintain alignment. You can print directly from the LCD screen using a full-size SD card, which is really nice to see over the previous generation boards using a micro SD card, or you can hook up the printer to either your computer to print directly from it or something like Octoprint using a USB-C cable, which is also something that's pretty cool to see. The screen itself seems near identical to the one on the Ender 3 V2, with perhaps a different firmware that auto dims after a few minutes of not being used. It works fine, but there's not a whole lot of options as far as control goes or getting feedback from the 
machine. However, someone did tell me that there is already some form of a custom community firmware available for this, which is something that I will probably be looking into. There's a storage drawer in the front right of the printer for spare nozzles or holding various tools. I never really had any issues with the wiring on the previous generations of Ender 3, but they definitely beefed up the strain relief on the bed for the Ender 3 S1 and the cable management as far as how it's routed for the X carriage is also much cleaner. The Ender 3 S1 is a 24 volt system running Marlin and they did relocate the power supply that is typically found on the back right side of the Z axis to the underside of the machine to make way for that second Z motor and second lead screw. I did crack open the bottom of the machine to take a look at the electronics and found a 350 watt Crowdy branded power supply as well as a new controller from Crowdy called the CRFDM V24 S1 301, which is quite a name and seems to have been made specifically for this printer. Cable management was quite nice, ferro connectors were used, and there is a fan in the case to help out with heat. The Ender 3 S1 came packaged very nicely and setup was pretty much the same as all previous Ender 3 machines where you've got the bottom of the machine that's fully assembled or the Y axis and the X and Z that needs to be attached with a couple of bolts. We did the entire unboxing and setup video and first print over on the ModBot Army YouTube channel that I can have linked in the description, but all in all, taking a very detailed look and going slow. The process probably took us about an hour to set up. I would say if you're not filming and if you're not doing a live stream that for most people from unboxing to printing, it's probably around 20 to 30 minutes tops. Once powered on, you will need to run the automatic bed leveling, which does a 16 point grid. It does a couple of probes at each spot and it is a fairly slow process. It takes a couple of minutes, but in the time I've been testing out this machine, I think I've only done that the initial time and maybe one other time. So it's not something you should be having to play around very often, especially if you make sure that the bed knobs are all nice and secured. Once the leveling sequence has been ran, all that's left to do is set the Z offset using a piece of paper and you are ready to start printing. So we started off on stream loading up some blue PLA and printing out the Lucky Cat, which is a common model that most of the Crowdy Ender 3, if not all of the printers have come with. And it turned out really, really nice. I've printed out quite a few of these cat models over the years. And I, I think that this is probably the nicest version or the nicest print that I've gotten of the cat model, just running these stock settings off any of the Crowdy printers. Once done, I was ready to slice up some files of my own. So I took the included SD card and plugged it into my Mac. On the SD card, I did find the Creality Slicer, which is just a skinned version of Cura. They did have an executable file on there to install it, but it was only for Windows. Luckily, there is a new version of it available for Mac as well. So I just went over to Creality's website under the download sections, and I was able to download and install the Creality Slicer. As long as you have the latest version of the Creality Slicer, you should find a built-in profile for the Creality Ender 3 S1. And that is the at least base of the profile that I used for all of the printing that I did. Before we get into the models that were printed, I did want to mention that as always, all of the links to all these files will be in the description of this video. So if you see anything that you want to print out for yourself, that is where you can find the link to the STL. The first print I started off with was a Mardi Gras mask from Chaos Cortec, which was a pretty large print that required supports on the underside and a little bit more for the eyes. If I recall correctly, it was close to a 20 hour print and I was very pleased with the results. The supports came off really nicely and I felt like the S1 did a nice job with this model. Other than one model, which I will show you in a little bit, all of the files and all of the things I've sliced up to print out on the Ender 3 S1 have been printed with a 0.2 or 200 micron layer height, which is pretty much my standard for day-to-day -day printing. Next, I moved on to a more challenging mechanical part that required tight tolerances created by 3D Printing World. I started off printing out his mini planetary gear, which although looked nice, had fused together on the bottom. I felt confident that if I adjusted the Z offset and I washed the first couple of layers, that the printer could get it. So I sliced up his mini planetary gear compartment and I adjusted the Z offset a bit to give less of a squish on the bed surface. That print turned out perfect and it is such a cool print in that it shows quite complex geometries, tolerance compatibilities, and it's functional for storage. At this point, the red PLA I was using was getting low, so I sliced up the Adams Family Thing model, which I didn't think I had enough material for in order to test out the filament runout sensor. 
The filament ran out, the printer paused, and the head moved out of the way. I was able to swap in another spool, hit resume, and finish the print without any issues. I followed this up with two prints of the spiral rings ornament from 3D Print Bunny, which is a pretty tough model with some serious overhangs. The first time I printed it out, it did complete, but early on, maybe 25% into the print, the nozzle did bump one of the rings, causing it to sort of break off, and it did correct itself and complete the printing process, but I went ahead and changed the filament for some protopod pasta PLA uh, and resliced it with all the same settings, but I enabled Z-Hop. And this time it was able to complete without bumping any of the parts. I wouldn't say that it is perfect, but considering the difficulty that this model is with all of its overhangs and really sort of small surface areas to build off of, I think the Ender 3 S1 did a great job. And I'm sure that if you spent time dialing in speeds and a few other settings uh, regarding cooling as well, that you can get even better results with this model. Next, I decided to throw some PETG at this printer. And I'm in the process of building the Voron switchwire and wanted to print out one of my little hardware organizers to really kind of help keep everything neat and organized while I'm building. So I loaded up the hardware organizer, which is a fairly large print, and I sliced it at a larger 0.3 layer height because I don't really need tight tolerances with this. And the main thing is I need a functional thing that can hold all of my parts. So I wanted to get it out as quick as possible. So again, slice it up at 0.3 at 240 Celsius on the hot end, and I hit print. The print didn't turn out bad and it's absolutely usable, but there's definitely some slight room for improvement. There's a couple areas of some sort of inconsistencies with extrusion, but because this hot end is not all metal, normally if I'm printing a 0.3 layer height of PETG, I would have bumped that temp up to about 250 Celsius, but because it's not all metal, the highest I really will ever go is 245, but I wanted to play it extra careful and so I printed it out at 240. I do think that that was a huge contributing factor to some of those imperfections, but I still think that overall it did a pretty dang good job. And again, messing around with the settings, going with a lower layer height will definitely yield some better results. Before unloading that PTG, I needed to print out a couple of small hooks for the carts that I used. And I printed that out with the exact same settings at 240 Celsius, same everything, except at a 0.2 layer height. And those prints turned out really, really nice. So again, I absolutely think that this extruder is fully capable of printing with PTG and very, very well. It's just the hot end limitation of it not being on metal that I wasn't able to print at the temperature that I typically would have. I did also print out all 20 drawers for this organizer, but just in PLA on this printer and it had no problem doing that. I could have loaded up the entire bed, but I did them in batches of five and each time I just hit print, flexed them off, hit print again and rinsed and repeated and the S1 had no problems printing out those parts. The last thing I wanted to throw at the Ender 3 S1 was some TPU. Not that you can't print TPU on Bowden type extrusion systems, because you absolutely can, but with this direct drive, I felt that it should be able to do it quite well, and it definitely can. I found a tree frog model over on Prusa Printers that I scaled up and printed it at, I believe, 45 millimeters a second, which is pretty damn quick for a 95A shore hardness uh, filament. So the, the machine had absolutely zero issues with extruding. There was no under extrusion whatsoever. However, it was not perfect. It was actually quite far from perfect with the main issue being related to cooling. The Ender 3 S1, as I mentioned earlier, has two cooling fans or two fans, one for the heat sink and one for the layer cooling. And the layer cooling fan isn't exactly a beefy fan. It's certainly sufficient for just regular kind of average printing. It did a great job of cooling all of the PLA parts, but with TPU and especially with how much I was trying to push it, it just was not able to cool the overhangs quick enough. And so it has a pretty nasty drip or sag on the underside of the for the chin area where it's got overhangs. If you look at the top down, it looks absolutely great, but the thing I think could definitely be improved on this machine is either adding a beefier, beefier fan or adding a secondary fan to help with cooling quicker. Overall, I've really enjoyed my time using the Ender 3 S1 and can absolutely see myself adding it into the rotation of the usual machines that I lean upon for a project. I've used a lot of Creality machines and I've used quite a few of their previous generations auto bed leveling, specifically the CR20 Pro and the CR10 S Pro. And those both had automatic bed leveling, but it was so terrible that it was basically unusable. And it was that generation where I told a lot of people that I'd rather have no automatic bed leveling than automatic bed leveling that you're fighting against. And I gotta say that it really feels like with the Ender 3 S1 and their CR Touch, both on the hardware side and in their implementation in the Marlin firmware, that they've got it figured out, which is something super exciting to see. 
I also have really enjoyed using the Sprite extruder and it is a massive improvement over the single armed plastic crowd extruder or even their dual geared aluminum red extruder that comes on the Ender 7, which I'm not crazy of having a direct drive extruder out of the box to me is something that I am a huge fan of. I didn't mind the single lead screw on the previous generations of Ender 3 machines. It just was never really problematic to me as long as I made sure that the eccentric nuts on the V-slot wheels were nice and tight, but having a second lead screw is certainly something a lot of people like to have and it will prevent any sort of sag in your gantry. So that's a nice upgrade. And although the flex plate on this is spring steel, it is very, very thin, but it is definitely an upgrade over the previous generation of Crowdy flex plates that were sort of like a magnetic mat that didn't really have great adhesion uh, or I guess magnetic force. And they also sort of wore down very quickly with this at least you can peel off that sticker and slap something else on so i do think it is a step in the right direction as far as their beds go i also complain quite a bit about noise with 3d printers and i just mentioned a few weeks ago that the ender 7 was an insanely loud printer well the ender 3 s1 is on the opposite side of that scale it is one of the quieter 3d printers i've used in some time so if noise is somewhat of a concern to you and you want a quiet 3d printer the ender 3 s1 is certainly one of again the most quiet machines i've gotten in in some time as always, there is no such thing as a perfect 3D printer, and although I have really enjoyed using the Sprite hot end extruder combination from Creality, I'm definitely disappointed that it is PTFE lined and not all metal. I'd really like for us to get beyond that where all metal hot ends just become the standard, which really gives you the capability of printing with a much wider range of materials, and you don't run the risk of melting the PTFE, which can cause nasty fumes and damage your hot end. In the past month, Creality announced the Ender 3 S1 Pro, which comes with the Sprite Pro Extruder hot end combo, which is basically the exact same thing, but with an all metal hot end instead of a PTFE line. It also comes with a touch screen and it comes with a powder coated PEI bed instead of the knockoff build tack. And I don't understand it. In, in my opinion, there is absolutely no need for an Ender 3 S1 and an Ender 3 S1 Pro. The Ender 3 S1 should be the Ender 3 S1 Pro. There, there just isn't any need to have a distinction between PTFE and the all metal hot end or powder coated PEI is definitely better than what comes on the Ender 3 S1. And even the touchscreen, I just don't understand why they felt the need to make two different versions of the same machine when in reality there should just be one. It should be the Ender 3 S1 that has all of those things baked into it. The Ender 3 S1 is retailing for around $430 currently while the new announced Pro is around 500, maybe a little bit more. And I just think that give all of that stuff for 430, I, I just don't understand the pricing difference either for a tiny piece of metal that makes it from PTFE to all metal, a powder coated PEI bed to replace the knockoff build tack and the touch screen, which most, a lot of budget $200 range 3D printers are coming with. I feel that they could have incorporated all of that into the Ender 3 S1 versus making you choose between spending 500 for an all metal hot end and the you know touch screen and the powder coated versus getting the other regular Ender 3 S1. What I'm really hoping for is that somebody releases an all metal heat break upgrade for the Ender 3 S1. That way you can get the Ender 3 S1 and you can easily drop the heater block, slap in a new one for a, you know, not crazy expensive and then have an all metal hot end. Regardless, there's no denying that the Ender 3 S1 comes with some serious improvements over the previous generation of Ender 3 machines. And it's something I'm really happy to see but it certainly comes at a cost. As mentioned, the Ender 3 S1 right now is around $430. While you can pick up the original Ender 3 for around the $200 price point, and that goes up or down depending on whether it's on sale or not. Starting off with that base Ender 3, you could get a big tree tech 32 bit board for around $50, a automatic bed leveling or BL touch for around $30, and something like the Micro Swiss all metal and direct drive extruder for about $100, which puts you roughly in the ballpark of the price of the Ender 3 S1 except you also get an all metal hot end if you go that route and upgrade. I think the defining factor is really this question and it's, do you want to mod? If you are fine with modding or enjoy modding or just don't wanna spend the money up front because you're not really sure, maybe it's your first 3D printer and you, you don't wanna spend a lot of money if it's not something you think that you're going to be using long-term, well, there's nothing wrong with starting with that Ender 3 and deciding, yeah, I love this. I want to upgrade and now going along the upgrade process. However, if you are somebody that doesn't have any desire to do any modding or playing around with any of the wiring or firmware side of things and would like closer to a plug and play experience, which 3D printing is not plug and play, but at least closer to that, 
then I can certainly see the value in the Ender 3 S1 giving you a lot of those things, but just out of the box instead of having to source different components and go through the upgrade process yourself. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer and it really comes down to who you are and what your goals are with the 3D printer. And as someone that absolutely loves modding just about everything, but certainly 3D printers, I can still appreciate the idea of having a 3D printer that you plug in, you run its little leveling sequence and you just start printing with it. And that's really the extent of what you do with it. So again, it comes down to who you are and what you want from the machine. And that has been the Ender 3 S1. Again, I've really enjoyed using this machine. I was very excited to see Creality announce the Sprite Extruder because it is a direct drive and dual gear, which is nothing that they've done in their previous generations of 3D printers. And I think it is absolutely a step in the right direction. Let me know in the comments down below. I know a ton of people own the original Ender 3 or some variation of an Ender printer. What are your thoughts on the Ender 3 S1? I'd love to know, do you think that these upgrades are great? Do you not really care because you're fine with going the modding route? I know a lot of the viewers on my channel definitely are no strangers to modding, but I'd love to know in the comments what your sort of opinions are on the Ender 3 S1 and also the Ender 3 S1 versus the Ender 3 S1 Pro, just what your thoughts are on that. If you do wanna find out more about this printer or purchase one for yourself, I will have links below in the description. And also if you have any questions on anything I covered or maybe did not cover in this video, please let me know in the comments and I will do my absolute best to answer. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.